Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today I am going to make a recipe that I can't even count how many people have begged me to make. It's finally here for you. I'm not even going to delay it anymore. Well, you actually already read it on the title. It's beef stroganoff. Now, I should say that when I first got my Instant Pot, before I was even a recipe creator once upon a time, I made a beef stroganoff from a recipe that I read, and I was so turned off by it because it had basically no flavor whatsoever. It was like sipping warm, cloudy, milky water with meat sitting in it. It was awful. So I was very hesitant to go back and even try it again because I was just not into it. The recipe also said to use cube steak, and honestly, I'll never use cube steak again after that. It was like the toughest thing ever. But you know, since so many of you have asked me to make a recipe, I said I'm going to do this and not only am I gonna make a stroganoff recipe But if I'm going to do a stroganoff, it's gonna be <laughs> Cliche thing to say the best stroganoff you've ever had and now I'm not lying when I say this because well I've had it at this point, and I'm telling you right now, I am a huge beef stroganoff lover. In fact, I will stroganoff day in, day out now, because I love it that much. So guys, what are you waiting for? What are you watching me do this intro for? But it really is amazing, I guarantee you. Beef stroganoff in your Instant Pot, let's go. First things first, let's boil our egg noodles. What we want to do is we want to take about a 12 ounce package and use about half of that. They're going to be a lot of noodles, or you could use the entire thing if you want, but they expand. Remember, pasta does that when it boils. So I'm going to do this in the old fashioned stove top and then just simply boil them and then strain them. Just like that. And again, this is half the bag and you can use the entire bag if you want. Totally depends on you. Um, I don't like it super, super noodle heavy, but there's going to be plenty of sauce to go around. So feel free to use the entire bag if you want. And by the way, the reason we're not cooking the noodles in the pot with the meat and everything else in the liquid is because it'll absorb too much of the liquid and it'll basically become super wet and expand to become soppy and it just won't be right. You don't want to do it like that. You want the noodles cooked separately. Trust me on this one. Not everything should be made in the Instant Pot at once. I wouldn't steer you wrong. And we're just going to let these cool and hang out while we make our stroganoff in the pot. Let's take an onion and dice it up. Now I want to take between one to one and a half pounds worth of like a beef chuck stew meat. Like, you know, like the kind that's already cubed up for you in the supermarket. That's going to be perfect for this. And what I want to do now is I want to season it with a little bit of kosher salt and pepper. And I've put my meat in a bowl, so I'm just going to take some kosher salt and just sprinkle it over throughout. And just, you know, use your eyes to judge. Don't put a ton in there, but don't put too little either. Just about this much is good. And then do the same with some black pepper. Get some in there. Obviously pepper's a little more potent than salt in terms of spice, so just be wary. And then just take your hand and kind of just mix everything around so everything's nice and seasoned. Make sure your hands are clean, obviously. And then we're gonna wash them when we're all done with this, okay? All right, when we're looking like this, we're good to go. So now let's go to our pot and put some oil in it and heat it up. So I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and two tablespoons of salted butter. Now I want to come down to the control panel and I want to hit the saute button and adjust so I'm on the more or the high setting. And once the butter is melted and the oil is sizzling and the nice and combined, we're now going to take all of our meat and add it to the pot. And we're just going to brown it inside of our delicious butter oil for about two to three minutes until each side is just kind of browned. We don't want it to be fully cooked, just browned. And I'm not putting any flour on the meat right now because I have my reasons. We're going to thicken it up a little bit later. Don't worry about that. And then just flip it and let it cook for about 30 seconds or so on each side. Make sure all of our sides are just kind of browned. So when we're looking like this in terms of color, we are good to go. This only took about like two to three minutes to do, guys. We do not want our meat fully cooked. So now what I want to do is I want to take a slotted spoon and I want to transfer my meat into a serving bowl and we'll just set aside. And that's perfect because now we want to add in our onions to the mix. And we're going to stir those around in the pot for about two minutes. And then after I stir in my onions, I'm going to then add in about 16 ounces of baby bella mushrooms. You can use eight ounces if you want instead, but I really like mushrooms, so I'm adding double the amount. So I'm going to use 16 ounces of baby bella mushrooms. And then just stir that up with the onions and make sure they get nice and coated with all of the butter and the oil as well. And they're going to start to sweat after about two minutes. So let this cook in there for a good two to three minutes. And let's also add in a tablespoon of crushed garlic and then mix that up with the mushrooms and the onions. And let's cook that for about another minute more. And then after about a minute of the onions, mushrooms, and garlic cooking together, I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of a dry white wine, like a Chardonnay or a Sauvignon Blanc. Or if you don't have it lying around, you can add in a quarter of a cup of cooking wine, white cooking wine. 
And if you don't want to use any cooking wand, you don't have to. That's fine too. But I'm telling you, the liquor is going to burn off and it should be just fine and safe for any kitties. I promise you, kids won't end up, you know, wasted under the table. And after we pour our wine in, let's just make sure we deglaze, meaning to scrape the bottom of the pot so it's nice and clear. We don't want anything stuck to the bottom there. And let it cook for another minute in the wine. Now I want to add in a tablespoon of a Dijon mustard, like a Grey Poupon. Pardon me, do you have any Grey Poupon? And stir that in with the mushrooms and the onions. And you'll see it's starting to release even more liquid, the mushrooms and the onions. So it's just beautiful and it's smelling incredible. Just stir the Dijon mustard up with everything. And if you hate mustard, trust me, it's going to be an amazing, amazing element of flavor. But you're not going to taste mustard. It's not going to be mustardy. It's going to be amazing once it's mixed with everything. So I do recommend you use it. But if you don't trust me and you absolutely hate this, Stuff, just don't use it. I will be mad at you, I promise. I won't even know. And I also want to add in a teaspoon of seasoned salt. Mix that up with everything in there. You're gonna have an amazing tasting sauce here, guys. I hate a stroganoff that's bland, and this is gonna be anything but. Okay, now it's time to add in one and a half cups of beef broth. And if you're not using the white wine, just add another quarter of the cup of the beef broth in there. Let's also add in a teaspoon of thyme. Oh, I got some time on my hands. And now let's give everything a good stir in the pot. Make sure any onions that might be sticking to the side just scraped and put inside so they're nice and floating in the liquid. And now let's add our meat back into the pot. And then just, you know, not really stir it per se, but just kind of make sure it's nice and submerged under all the liquid. And now we're gonna put our lid on and we're gonna cook. There we go. Make sure we're in sealing position. So now let's come back to our control panel on our pot, hit the keep warm cancel button or just the cancel button depending on your model and we're gonna pressure cook. So we're gonna hit the manual or the pressure cook button depending on your model and I'm gonna go, look at that, we're already practically there for seven minutes on high pressure guys. That's it, seven minutes. Now that we're done, we're gonna do a quick release. And the pin drops, the lid will come off and we are already looking and smelling incredible. So now I'm gonna come and hit the keep warm cancel button again and then hit the saute button again And again, we're gonna be on the more of the high setting and we want to bring this to a little bit of a bubble Now I want to thicken my sauce up by making a cornstarch slurry and I'm gonna take equal parts cornstarch and water So that's gonna be two tablespoons of cornstarch mixed with two tablespoons of water And then get it nice and mixed up so it goes from a cement like consistency to a nice smooth one All right, I got a little messy and I've been really addicted to this stuff lately. Orson, guys, this stuff is amazing, and it's going to be amazing in your stroganoff. Uh, I'm going to use one 5.2 ounce package of the Borson in the sauce. Now, if you don't have Borson, if you can't find it, it's typically found in like the deli or the meat section of your supermarket in the little kiosk area over there. Or Costco sells them for three in a pack for an amazing price. You can get them there. Um, you can use cream cheese, about five ounces of a brick of cream cheese. All right, so take the Borson and cut it up into chunks so you can easily dump it into the pot and it'll disperse more easily that way than you know having it in one giant round clump like it comes in. And now that we're bubbling, we're gonna now add in our cornstarch slurry and immediately stir that in and it's gonna thicken up our sauce a little bit here. And we're gonna let that continue to bubble for another minute. And I'm now gonna add in a packet of one of these like Lipton onion mixes, like an onion dip mix, an onion mushroom mix, the beefy onion, the beefy mushroom, whatever, something of that nature. This one's gonna be great for it, I think. So I'm using this onion mushroom. I'm just gonna pour that in there and I'm gonna stir in the mix. It's gonna give it even more flavor. And after I added the cornstarch slurry and the onion seasoning packet, I just want to keep it on warm now because I want the bubbles to simmer down before I add in some of that sour cream and all the dairy. So I want to hit the keep warm cancel button and then just go into keep warm. That's exactly all I want. Don't worry about the time. It'll just start counting up. Doesn't make a difference. Just leave it long enough for how long you want it to keep warm until you're done serving it. So now that our bubbles are practically died down, it's now time to add in our sour cream. That's a key ingredient in a stroganoff. And I'm going to be adding eight ounces or a cup worth as well as the Borson. And now let's mix everything together up in the pot and we are going to be good to go. This is really gonna be what's making it a true stroganoff and the flavor is going to be beyond your wildest stroganoff dreams. Just make sure you keep stirring until all of the Borson is melded inside of the sauce. And guys, here's our stroganoff looking insane and smelling insane. And you see how thick and rich and creamy it is. Alrighty, it's time to serve this amazing stroganoff up. But first, let's go back to our noodles. So I'm gonna take a bowl and I'm gonna ladle some of the noodles in there. However many you really want is fine. I think that this will be plenty. And now I wanna take some stroganoff and lay it over my noodles. Mmm, 
Let's get a little bit more in there and top it with some of that amazing sauce. I don't want to skimp on the sauce. And I got to make this look pretty for a photo too. I mean, it's the photos that make you guys want to try the food, right? <laughs> Oh boy, and we are ready to try this out. I cannot wait. And here's my stroganoff. off. Don't you just love that word? Oh, there's so many things I can say, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and here we go. Finally. Finally, a stroganoff that actually has flavor to it. I can't tell you how many times I've had a stroganoff and have been let down because it tasted like basically meat and hot water with like, you know, a creamy colored water. It had no flavor. This, guys, is on another stroganoff level. Mmm. Mmm. The sauce. The sauce is insane. The meat is perfect for this. I really do suggest using some chuck like cubes if you can. Don't use cubed steak. I basically hate using cube steak for anything. Do not use cube steak. Use like chuck cubes like they use for beef stew and the sauce poured over that meat and the noodles with all the mushrooms in there and all the goodness guys it's gonna take you to cloud nine you hear that it got my motor running this is food nirvana right here and, and I don't know I've been talking the Kurt Cobain kind you know what as amazing as this is guys don't even take my word for it try it yourself and I guarantee you you're gonna be stroking off until the sun rises and to that Good. I've never had a stroganoff sauce taste this good. And even if you don't like beef, just make the sauce as it is and then pour it over pasta if you want, or even over chicken. It's gonna be just as good over chicken because the sauce is just insane. And these wonderful egg noodles, so fluffy and light. Mm, it's real good. Guys, if you enjoy these videos and these easy to follow recipes, go to PressureLoveCooking.com because guess what? There's like 150 more of them there with more coming each and every week and each and every one has a video just like this one to go with it to show you how easy this is to do. We're best friends cooking together. It's that simple. And of course, you can pin any recipe to any Pinterest board you like. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLoveCooking and like that page for any updates whenever a new recipe drops, for tips, for humor, Facebook Lives. You never know when one's going to pop up. I'm very impromptu with them. And of course, at PressureLoveCooking, to subscribe to me on YouTube. YouTube. Definitely subscribe to me there. You don't want to miss any videos and Pinterest Instagram Twitter I have all of that stuff guys. Thank you so much again, and I'm telling you right now. Cheers